Can a psychological thriller work as a musical? Can a high-budget action flick be successfully broken into two parts? We'll be sure to find out once these 2024 films hit screens. If anything should put directors Anthony and Joe Russo's upcoming sci-fi epic The Electric State on viewers' watch lists, it's the extraordinary cast. Millie Bobby Brown and Chris Pratt are slated to play the lead roles, but it's in the supporting cast where things get really enticing. The film will feature an ensemble cast of actors in both live action and voiceover roles, including Kiwi Kwan, Brian Cox, and Jenny Slate. On top of all that, Former Seinfeld star Jason Alexander will also be making a rare major motion picture appearance in the feature. Take me to your leader. <laughs> Outside of the cast, it'll also be interesting to see how the Russos translate the striking imagery of Simon Stollenhog's electric state graphic novel into a film adaptation. The images from the source material make use of evocative deep blue hues and feature massive robots lingering around in everyday environments, leaving a lot of opportunities for the filmmakers to produce equally striking cinematography through which they can tell this unique sci-fi story. Adrian Molina's days at Pixar date back to 2007 when he worked as an animator on the end titles of Ratatouille. Since then, Molina has moved up the ranks at Pixar to provide additional screenplay material for The Good Dinosaur and Monsters University. He also served as co-director and screenwriter on the 2017 smash hit Coco. Come 2024, Molina will move up to solo directing Pixar's upcoming title, Elio. Details on the project are minimal, but according to Pixar's official Twitter account, the film will be a sci-fi yarn about a young boy who winds up up in the far reaches of outer space and gets mistaken by alien life forms as the ambassador for Earth. Coco was such an extraordinary and well-renowned feature that the prospect of any new production from Molina should be enough of a reason for Pixar fans to celebrate. It'll also be interesting to see Pixar's next take on the world of sci-fi storytelling, a domain the studio has explored sporadically throughout the years to varying results. For example, WALL-E was a fairly resounding success when it came out in 2008. However, their more recent attempt at a sci-fi story, 2022's Lightyear, received mixed reviews at best. With so many promising elements, even this early in to its production, Yelio has the potential to be another story chapter in Molina's prolific career at Pixar. It's been a while since audiences got to explore the vast and imaginative world of Miles Morales depicted in 2018's Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. However, not only is a sequel to that movie imminent, but a pair of follow-ups are also on the docket. The second sequel, set in the Spider-Verse universe, will be Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse, which is scheduled to hit theaters in March 2024. Given how scant few details are available about the first of these sequels, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, it's no surprise that Beyond the Spider-Verse is shrouded in mystery. Most information about which characters from the first two films will appear in the third is still not public knowledge, though it has been confirmed that Jason Schwartzman's spot will serve as the main villain in the 2024 film. Still, the vibrancy of this world makes the concept of spending more time in the multiverse of Spider-People incredibly exciting. Plus, the title Beyond the Spider-Verse suggests some truly trippy storytelling possibilities could be in store for audiences. Maybe even a live-action mashup? We'll have to wait and see to find out more about what this particular movie has up its sleeve, but if the quality of Into the Spider-Verse is any indication, audiences should get stoked for what Beyond the Spider-Verse has in store. Look, I made a promise, so I have to keep it. The world of A Quiet Place is poised to expand significantly with the forthcoming spin-off, A Quiet Place Day One. While details about this film's plot are still largely under wraps, it does appear that new characters beyond the original Quiet Place protagonists will be taking center stage, with Lupita Nyong'o and Joseph Quinn lined up to play two of the new film's leads. There's also change afoot behind the scenes, with Pig writer and director Michael Cernoski taking over John Krasinski's place as director. With such vast shifts in casting and leadership, this next installment to the Quiet Place universe could offer something noticeably different from its predecessors. The title suggests that moviegoers will be returning to the very start of the noise-sensitive alien invasion, a backdrop briefly explored in the prologue to A Quiet Place Part 2. Exploring how humans react to their suddenly changing world could certainly provide a fresh spin for the franchise, especially since Sarnowski proved to be extremely gifted at exploring humanity's ability to grapple with loss in Pig. 
Ethan Hunt, the protagonist of the expansive Mission Impossible series, has had to pull off some incredible feats throughout this franchise. However, soon Tom Cruise's iconic character will have to complete an especially daunting task, nailing a two-part blockbuster. The next installment in the Mission Impossible franchise, Dead Reckoning, is going to be split across a pair of motion pictures, the second of which will arrive in June 2024. As titles like Divergent Allegiant have proved in the past, taking one story and splitting it across two movies can go very wrong very fast. However, if Hunt could climb the world's tallest building and survive, then it stands to reason he might manage to make Dead Reckoning a satisfying multi-film experience. Am I supposed to do this? One promising aspect of the second part of Dead Reckoning is that it'll feature some cast members that won't be around for the first installment, including Nick Offerman and Holt McCallany. The presence of new faces indicates that the second part of Dead Reckoning might just offer something unique, rather than act as a rehash of the first part. That's just one of the countless reasons moviegoers are on the edge of their seats, waiting for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 2 to show up in theaters. After dominating the Academy Awards, Bong Joon-ho returns to both science fiction cinema and English language storytelling with his 2024 directorial effort, Mickey 17. Based on the book Mickey 7 by Edward Ashton, Mickey 17 stars the endlessly versatile Robert Pattinson as a man tasked with working on an expedition to colonize a far-off ice planet. From there, if prior Joon-ho movies are any indication, the film is likely to take some unpredictable turns and project potent social commentary on the world around us. There are still so few details on what this adaptation will look and feel like, but Junho's incredible body of work makes it difficult not to get tantalized by this project immediately. If the film's elevator pitch wasn't enough to excite you, the rest of the cast just might. Aside from Robert Pattinson taking on the lead role, Tony Collette, Steven Yoon, Naomi Aki, and Mark Ruffalo are all listed as supporting cast. Pattinson has always shown a penchant for working with beloved auteurs like David Cronenberg, Robert Eggers, and Claire Denis. So it's incredibly exciting to imagine what he'll accomplish as a performer working under the filmmaker responsible for Parasite. Needless to say, there are more than a few reasons to be pumped for the release of this legendary legendary director's next cinematic effort. Furiosa is a new George Miller movie. That fact alone should send it rocketing toward the very top of any list of the most anticipated movies of 2024. The fact that it's a George Miller directorial effort set in the Mad Max world, however, makes the prospect of this cinematic experience even more appetizing. This time around, the character of Furiosa from Mad Max Fury Road will not be portrayed by Charlize Theron, but by Anya Taylor-Joy. This leading lady has been on a hot streak with her work in movies and TVs, including notable 2022 titles like The Northman and The Menu. So the idea of her getting to work under the direction of George Miller sounds downright extraordinary. Care for a demonstration? English actor Thom Burke will also appear in the film's cast. While Burke may not be a household name yet, he delivered extraordinary work on Joanna Hogg's The Souvenir. With a background largely in British indies and TV, it'll be extremely revelatory to see what he can do with a much larger canvas at his disposal. Beyond the cast, which also includes Chris Hemsworth, Furiosa is bound to be home to a practically realized spectacle that only Miller would have the gall and imagination to pull off. If he manages to capture even a fraction of the Fury Road magic, then Furiosa will be only the latest example of why any new George Miller movie should be met with great anticipation. The Planet of the Apes franchise has seen seemingly constant updates over the course of the last few decades, which might make viewers think that this saga would be running on fumes creatively. However, the most recent trilogy of features from this universe, two of which were helmed by the Batman director Matt Reeves, were some of the most exciting and daring entries to date. That's not to say Planet of the Apes is incapable of churning out a dud movie. Tim Burton's 2001 film Planet of the Apes was certainly a lacking contribution to the franchise. However, there's clearly a lot of creative longevity within this universe which makes the prospect of the 2024 installment, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, sound especially appetizing. According to Deadline, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes will take place decades after the events of War for the Planet of the Apes, though any further plot details are wrapped up in secrecy for now. However, the idea of a continuation of the story first established in Rise of the Planet of the Apes is certainly compelling. Additionally, with Wes Ball as the new director, there's plenty of possibility for some fresh new visuals to be incorporated into this installment. 
What's more, Owen Teague is tapped to play the main ape, and his remarkable work in features like To Leslie makes us enthusiastic to see what'll do in a motion capture role. To summarize, there are plenty of reasons to go bananas for Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. After finally taking on the mantle of Captain America in the final episode of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Sam Wilson will get to headline his own feature film in Captain America New World Order. Directed by loose filmmaker Julius Ona, Captain America New World Order promises to continue some of the most intriguing elements of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. However, New World Order is also primed to connect Wilson's Captain America to broader parts of the Marvel Cinematic Universe mythology, like the long-awaited return of Tim Blake Nelson's Samuel Stern from The Incredible Hulk. This Marvel Studios feature is also positioned to include the debut appearance of Harrison Ford as General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross. Just the presence of such a legendary acting giant should put New World Order on many a viewer's radar. However, the fact that it will also function as an opportunity to see the new Captain America soar as a big screen leading man is without a doubt the primary cause of the buzz that has already begun surrounding this film. The Dragon Warrior is back. In March 2024, Poe will return for another adventure in Kung Fu Panda 4. That's all that anybody in the general public knows about this forthcoming sequel, with even key details like the creative team behind this follow-up shrouded in mystery. However, ambiguity certainly won't keep people from getting excited about all the possibilities of seeing Poe go on another epic quest. After all, the first three Kung Fu Panda movies are among the strongest titles in the DreamWorks animation canon, with Kung Fu Panda 2 standing out as a sequel that took the franchise in a new tonal direction without losing the core ingredients that made the original installation so lovable. You gotta let go of that stuff from the past because it just doesn't matter. If the Kung Fu Panda franchise could pull off a sequel as good as Kung Fu Panda 2, then there's a good chance Kung Fu Panda 4 could also be something special. Plus, recent DreamWorks animation titles like The Bad Guys and Puss in Boots The Last Wish have been remarkably strong in overall quality. If that hot streak of creativity extends to this forthcoming Kung Fu Panda feature, then audiences should prepare themselves for another totally awesome addition to the Kung Fu Panda saga. The Marvel Cinematic Universe has often concerned itself with totally unknown superheroes who have never been considered for the big screen before, like the Guardians of the Galaxy or the Eternals. However, one of its upcoming 2024 titles will be anchored by a superhero who has not only appeared in a feature film before, but actually led a trilogy of movies across the late 1990s and early 2000s. A new incarnation of Blade, once played by Wesley Snipes, is headed to the MCU, with this version of the character being played by Mahershala Ali. According to The Hollywood Reporter, the two-time Oscar winner has such a deep passion for the character that he outright asked Marvel Studios to let him play the vampire hunter. While Ali's commitment to Blade has never wavered in the years since he signed on to the role, the movie itself has experienced several hardships on its way to the screen, including the loss of original director Bassam Tariq. While those setbacks have been discouraging. The choice of Yann Demange as the new director of the film inspires a lot of confidence that this feature could still turn out to be something special. Additionally, Marvel Studios has successfully delivered several classics in spite of turbulent productions in the past, so there are still a few good reasons to remain hopeful that Ali Stinta's Blade will turn out to be a success. The Fall Guy originated as a TV show starring Lee Majors that aired on ABC for five seasons in the 1980s. In March 2024, though, it'll be released as an action movie headlined by Ryan Gosling and helmed by Bullet Train director David Leitch. However, Gosling isn't the only recognizable name in this action feature. Emily Blunt, Stephanie Hsu, Winston Duke, Aaron Taylor Johnson, and Hannah Waddingham are all set to round out the ensemble cast. The Fall Guy is so far out from release that many aspects of the production are still unknown, including just how much or how little this motion picture will adhere to its source material. However, any opportunity to watch Ryan Gosling punch people sounds like a good time at the movies, and the supporting cast sounds ace. Leech's filmmaking career has had its ups and downs, but the best of his works have had a propulsive energy and zippy atmosphere that's difficult to resist. Plus, his peak effort as an auteur, 2017's Atomic Blonde, also featured incredible fight choreography, which could indicate The Fall Guy will feature cool combat sequences at the very least. All in all, the ingredients are there for this movie to be much more than a rehash of a 1980s TV staple. 
The original Joker may not have been everybody's cup of tea, but it undeniably separated itself from the typical comic book movie adaptation genre and remained a topic of cultural discussion for years after its release. After years of speculation over whether or not a sequel to Joker would ever hit movie theaters, its follow-up is officially scheduled to come out in October 2024. Another key figure from the villain's comic book lore, Harley Quinn, will also play a role in the film, with Lady Gaga portraying her. On top of that, this follow-up, entitled Joker Folia De, will also be a musical, which will allow the movie to indulge Gaga's talents as a singer and differentiate itself immensely from its predecessor. While the concept of making a Joker sequel may sound predictable, it's safe to assume few fans of the original were expecting a musical to follow it. Additionally, the idea of Lady Gaga playing a version of Harley Quinn, with even a fraction of the energy and passion the performer brought to her House of Gucci performance sounds even more exciting. Joker Folia De is bound to be as divisive as its predecessor, but it also sounds like the kind of sequel that swings for the fences rather than sits on its laurels. <laughs> After Titanic, audiences had to wait 12 years for a new James Cameron movie. After Avatar, moviegoers had to wait another 13 years to experience a fresh vision from the filmmaker. A significantly shorter wait will exist between Avatar The Way of Water and Cameron's next directorial effort, the untitled third Avatar movie, set for a December 2024 release. While Cameron is keeping many details of Avatar 3 close to the vest, Collider reports that this film will introduce some new characters poised to make waves throughout the entire swath of Avatar sequels. David Thewlis is slated to play a Navi character that will debut in this film, while characters played by Michelle Yeoh and Una Chaplin will also premiere in this installment of the franchise. Cameron's penchant for extravagant spectacle in the first two Avatar movies should make it clear that this upcoming sequel will continue working to that effect. It's also exciting to know that Avatar 3 will introduce new characters instead of just leaning on familiar figures from the franchise's past. There's still so much to see on Pandora, and that makes the idea of returning to the planet in Avatar 3 an immensely rousing concept, especially since it will arrive much sooner than the previous films in the series. Outstanding.